Uh, the next speaker, I'm happy to introduce Marcus Oki. Um, and he is really the go-to guy for charisma, conversation skills. He's been teaching this stuff for 10 years. It's a long time. And he's uh, worked with pretty much all the big players in the dating industry as a consultant for their companies. Uh, he's a returning speaker to the 21 convention. And he goes by your charisma coach or the conversation king he's known as. Um, and today he's going to be talking about conversation hacking. It's a kind of a new pioneered thing in its infancy, so I'm excited to learn all about that. And um, he's spoken all over the world, so let's welcome Marcus. Thanks, Mom. I'm here today to talk to you about conversation hacking. It's something I'm very excited to be sharing with you because I haven't really shared with this with anyone before at all. I spend a lot of time helping people from different walks of life improve their communication skills. And over the last 10 years, I've worked with some great people. During that time, I started to notice little patterns emerging in conversations I was having, conversations that would flow really well and really elegant. In fact, it got to the point where a good friend of mine, a guy called Joss, We'd be on Skype in the evenings, and we'd chat to each other, and we'd say, guess what? Having a conversation today, I threw in this little line into the conversation, and a great thing happened. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. So we started to see patterns in the conversations we were having. What we learned is if we could take those patterns and apply them to future conversations, we'd get similar results. So the reason I'm here to teach conversation hacking is to help you improve your persuasion skills, to really give you simple shortcuts to instant influence. In other words, bite-sized pieces of persuasion that you can use with people. So for me, the real, um, the real charm of this has been the practicality. I never dress as neat as I could, I don't think. I, I'm never sort of one of these people that goes into the most fashionable places and covers myself in very good clothing, as you can tell now. And so uh, a problem I always used to have is I'd go up to uh, nightclubs, kind of, you know, they're not really my thing, but I go up sometimes and I get turned away because I was wearing trainers. When I was in Australia recently, I walked into a nightclub and the guy looked at me and said, I'm sorry, mate, you can't come in, it's your trainers. And I remembered a conversation hack. I said, put yourself in my shoes here. No, no, really, I really wish you would put yourself in my shoes here because that means I'd be able to get in because then you'd be wearing my shoes and I'd be wearing your shoes. And he laughed, and he let me in. I was like, great. So conversation hacks are little things that will improve your persuasion skills. Now, I can't promise you they're going to turn you into a Svengali-like person who can you know, charm the birds out of the trees. But they might make you maybe 20%, 30%, 40% more persuasive. And the best thing of all is we can use them right now. So I've, you know, I've been lucky. I've, I've managed to live a champagne lifestyle on lemonade money. I think a great thing is to be free and to travel the world. And certainly the case for me is, you know, I've always liked to say yes to any um, opportunity that comes my way. Recently, I was boarding a plane. And uh, for, for some reason, I thought, I'm going to experiment. Because a conversation hacker experiments. You think, I wonder if this would work. What would happen if I did this? And I boarded the plane with my ticket, 47J. And I walked up to the stewardess and I said, if you can guess my ticket number, I'll give you a kiss. She went, 47J. I was like, it is 47J. Now, I expected she was going to pucker up, but she didn't. Instead, all the color came from her cheeks, and she kind of went into a state of shock, which is pretty standard when I try and give her a girl a kiss. <laughs> so she said, oh my god, I must be psychic. I thought. She's probably playing some sort of stunt with me. She's obviously clearly got a screen that's telling her all the seat numbers that have been allocated. But no, she just lucked it. She actually guessed my seat number. So I got on the plane, and the stewards and stewardesses were running up to me. More the stewards. Uh, and I, they were asking, oh my god, you know, are you psychic? Is, is, is our, is our, uh, our co-worker psychic? And you know, it wasn't. It was just luck. But what I realized was what I'd done is by saying that, I created a bit of drama. I created a spike of emotion as soon as I got on the plane. Because that stewardess had probably just been sat there all day going, yeah, seat 47B, 28J, and so forth. 